as a way maker.
Good morning, good morning to all of you. We pray and hope that this morning's life find you all this well. Amen. Even in these turbulent times, all is well. Amen. So we pray and hope that you will share this live, that this word will find you somewhere, that you will find yourself in this text somewhere this morning, that, that it will give you hope, aspiration, motivation. Most of all, give you assurance that Jesus will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Truly, we thank God for this opportunity, and we're not going to belong the time at all. We're going to jump right into the Word. But as we open up with prayer, those who have given your prayer request, we're going to pray for you all at the opening of this prayer. We pray and hope that this prayer will find you and comfort you. Amen. Father God, in the mighty precious name of Jesus, we come just to tell you thank you. We thank you for life, health, and strength. Dear God, we thank you for every opportunity that you have laid before us, this God, to be able to minister your word to your people, even from the desk of a home. And we want to tell you thank you, God. We thank you, dear God, for these who have called in and uh, 
type their request of prayer in this morning. You said for us to cast our cares upon you, for you care for us, that we should bring the burden. So, dear God, we pray right now for the Patterson and Walker family right now. God, we pray for them that comfort will find them, understanding will find you, that answers will meet them, dear God, to their unanswered questions, dear God. We ask right now that you will just strengthen them with their all week, build them up where they've been torn down, dear God. And Father God, we ask that you will fill any empty voids in the lives of those families, dear God. Fill the void, dear God, with happiness, peace, joy, like we said, understanding, knowledge. <clears throat> Father God, we pray for Sister Linda Cup right now. We pray for her, dear God. Strengthen her where she's weak, dear God. Meet her at the point of her knees. Give her the necessities of life, dear God. Give her knowledge and insight on sight. Give her a one mindset, dear God, to understand you, hear you, dear God. We pray for the Brown family in South and North Carolina, dear God. What? Ever, Father God, may be uh, befelling them, dear God. We ask right now in the mighty name of Jesus, God, that you would just comfort them, dear God. Father God, meet them at the point of their need, dear God. Whatever it is that they're standing in the need of, dear God, meet them at the point of need. Strengthen them, Father God, where they are weak, dear God. Build them up where they've been torn down, dear God. Father God, we ask that you allow family to come together, dear God. Family will come together in the brown family, North and South Carolina, dear God, where they can embrace and hug one another. In the name of Jesus, encourage one another, dear God. We pray right now for the Adams children right now to cover them, dear God. Continue to cover them, dear God. Out from under the umbrella of their mother, but under the umbrella of your Holy Spirit. Cover them as they go to and fro, dear God. Trying to become something great, dear God. Trying to get a, a decent education, dear God. To set themselves up for the next, Father God, stage of their lives, dear God. So, God, I ask right now that you would do that for them. Strengthen them, dear God. Cover them. We pray for the Wall family right now. That Sister Diane and her husband, dear God. Whatever needs that need to be met in their lives, dear God. We ask you to throw your strong arm protection around them, dear God. As husband and wife, dear God. That they'll be able to pray together, understand together, talk, walk, and love together, dear God. Whatever it is, dear God, I know we cast it at your feet today, dear God. You said you wipe away every tear from the eye, dear God. Allow them to not lack not one thing, dear God, because they made their request known. We pray for Sister Laquandra Price right now. We pray over her right now. No matter what the doctor has to say, we're going to believe your report. So we believe right now that all is well, dear God. And whatever it is she may have to go through, dear God, you will give her the strength. You will give her divine healing, wholeness in her body right now. No weapon formed against us shall prosper, dear God, that she can get through this dark time in her life because faith will move. We ask right now, God, that faith move in her life, faith move in the doctor report, faith move upon her physical body. In the name of Jesus, we pray for the Doster family. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Father God, we pray for Sister Christina, her husband, her children. We pray for them right now in the mighty precious name of Jesus, dear God. Father God, I thank you for her tuning in to this live. Father God, I pray and hope that this message will find her and her family. Father God, that it will touch them in the recesses of their souls, dear God, that they can receive something from those words, whatever they're standing in the need of, dear God. I know you already met those needs, dear God. Father God, because, see, we may be separate, but we still connected. So, God, we say thank you for allowing them to hear this message to the Doster family. God bless. Father God, I pray right now for my little family right now, dear God. Strengthen us where we weak, build us up where we've been torn down. Father God, that we will continue to stay on the battlefield, dear God, even through the hiccups and the trip-offs that we even have made ourselves, dear God. Father God, you have vindicated us, dear God. You have strengthened us, dear God. You have got us through some turbulent times, dear God. And we say thank you, dear God. Continue to allow us to grow together as a family, dear God, under the umbrella of your Holy Spirit. And we say thank you, God. We bless your holy name. Now, God, we ask that you allow this word to go forth and accomplish that which it is set out to do. Father God, that it would not return unto thee void, dear God. We ask that you allow land to decrease, that you would increase in the mightily. Oh, let the words of the mouth and the mouth of thy heart. Let this word 
be what they need. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. amen. We pray right now, right now, dear God. Just one come here, Sister Elliot, dear God. We pray for her brother and her, dear God. We pray for her and Brother Gil right now. Strengthen them with their weak, build them up where they've been torn down, dear God. We know, you know, everybody know what he and they are going through, dear God. So, God, we don't have to put it out here, dear God. You already know. So right now, God, we ask that you will lay your hands on the day, dear God. Father God, give him strength today, dear God. No pain today in the name of Jesus. Hover over that home, dear God. Give them some peace and some reverence, dear God. Give them some uh, uh, adequate rest today, dear God. That they can rest in your bosom, in your arm, in your care with hope in their hearts and minds. So we say thank you, dear God. We release in their atmosphere right now, dear God, your presence. You don't need uh, our permission. We petition you to go. So, God, I petition you to go to Great Falls right now and walk into their home, dear God. Let peace, let joy, let love abide, dear God, in their homes. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. We thank each and every one of you for who have tuned in. Amen. We say good morning, Sister Kim Chung Lee. Amen. Good morning, Sister Harris. Amen. Good morning, Sister Johnson and family. Good morning, Sister Shaniqua. Amen. To all of you who have just tuned in, we thank God for you. Come on and go with me to Psalms 13th chapter, verses 1 through 6. Amen. Psalms, the vision of Psalms, the 13th chapter. And we're going to begin reading at the first verse. Amen. Psalms, the 13th chapter. And it says, how long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I make, how, how long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Come on, somebody say, not long. Come on. Consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. Light my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemy say I have prevailed against him, and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. Fifth verse says, but I have trusted. Come on. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. Sixth verse says, I will sing unto the Lord. Because he have dealt bountifully with me. Good God Almighty. I will sing unto the Lord. For he have dealt bountifully with me. Mm. Can we just talk this morning just simply. How do you respond in these dark times? How do you, how do we respond to these dark times? And our simple subject this morning, your word for the week, from complain to praise, from complain to praise. It's no secret. It's nothing hidden. It's nothing unknown at this point. We are or have been in some faith challenging time. Men of our faiths have been tested almost into the thing one year. We have faced, we are seeing some terrible times in America. Wars and rumors of wars. People in high places can't get along. Come on. We are witnessing not only our democracy, but we are witnessing a very eroding base for Christianity. And why, why do we say that? Because people 
are not only losing hope in democracy, but people are losing hope in faith. When we look at this text, it talks about communication. And we must understand communication between people takes place at three different levels. Number one, at a frivolous level. Number two, on a factual level. And number three, on a level of feeling. When we talk about a frivolous communication, it takes place, brothers and sisters, on the surface without harm or any offense or questioning, such as, how are you doing? That's not offensive. Looks like it's going to be rain today. That's not offensive. That's not harmful. What do you do for a living? That's not harmful. Some may say it's being nosy, but that's communication on the frivolous level to the kind of communication or the type of communication that we have with strangers or even those that we know. When we talk about communication on a fact factual level, it goes just a little deeper with the discussion of things in which two of us are vitally interested in. Come on. Such as we are still 10,000 short of our goal. Uh-huh. What is your strategy for getting people just for an uh, instant to vote? How about them cowboys? Yeah, I said, I, you know, I don't like the cowboy, but, but that's on a factual communication thing that people come and say, how about them cowboys? That's communication on a factual level, the kind of communication we have with acquaintances. When we talk about communication on the level of feeling, it takes place at the deepest level with the expression, brothers and sisters, of our feelings about what is happening around us. Uh, such as, I don't believe you're doing your part. Come on. Why do you always gripe and complain about everything that I do? Come on. Uh, you know I really love you. That's factual communication. That's communication at the level of feeling, the kind of communication we have with our closest friends. We communicate with our friends at a frivolous level at times, or uh, sometimes we communicate with strangers at the level of a feeling. But the principle still remains the same. Intimate relationships, the deeper the level of the communication. Uh -uh. It's, it's according to how intimate our relationship is determines how deep our communication can become. I'm going to let that soak in for a minute because some of us talk to too many people about our business that don't need to hear it. That has no good interest in heart for you. They just want to know your business. Come on, somebody. That's why we got to be careful what information, what level we talk to everybody we come in contact to because everybody could care less. Some folk could care less. That's why that's true of our own human relationships. It is equally, brothers and sisters, true of our relationship with God as well. At the beginning of our relationship with God, come on. We are like teenagers with a new car full of excitement. Uh-huh. We're thrilled. Totally clueless about the dangers involved in operating that vehicle. Come on. You know how well when you got your first car when you were 16, if you did? Come on, somebody. Some of them get a car today with 30. But however, whenever you got that car, you act like a kid on Christmas. 
That's the way we are as new Christians. Someone has suggested we need to lock up Christians for about six months before we let them out. Because guess what? They're full of excitement. They're full of joy. Not understanding that perilous times will come. That's why we got to be thankful to God for the new life we have in Christ. We have God and life is good. That's excitement. We might call this the honeymoon period of our relationship with God. But however, as we move to a deeper level in our relationship with God, we begin to be confronted by some opposition. That's why God has assured us he will never leave us. Yet at times, we can't sense that. Am I right about it? His presence in our lives. God rules over all creation. Yet evil often seems to have the upper hand when I want to do good. Some way, somehow, evil will just what? Show up. God promised to guide us. Yet there are moments when it seems he have left us in the dark. God often promised us abundant life, but yet this life is frequently filled with pain. How do we respond to these dark times in our life? Well, some folk cover them up with a smile on their face. Some folk even cover them up with hallelujahs, hollow hallelujahs, I will say. Some blame them on their lack of faith and they try harder. And some folk just quietly slip away and become uh, alumni of church. Come on. There is a better way that is to that we can understand. There's a better way we can deal uh, with these dark times. And there is a way that is to ladies. Dark times, our troubles, our paradoxes before the Lord in the language of a complaint. Uh-oh. We learn about this language of complaint here in the Psalms. When we look at the Psalm tradition, the Psalms uh, uh, like these or like this one were considered to be layman Psalms. They are found throughout uh, the book of Psalms. You can find these. Uh, in fact, more layman Psalms appear uh, in the book of Psalms than any other type of book. They have been identified over 50 identified layman Psalms. And 17 of them were community layman. You get that in a minute. So as we look at this, this text, we got to understand that David had to build a level of confidence, not only within himself, but he had to come to grips and have confidence and faith in God. In verses one through two, you understand, we see the complaint to God. He went directly began to complain to God. Four times the psalmist addressed God with questions. How long? How long will you forget me? How long will you hide your face from me? How long will I hurt? How long will evil reign over me? He went to God with a complaint. Follow me. We must not soften these questions. We must not just throw this to the side for they are full of passion and intensity and anger and also with great feeling. The psalmist declared, God, there are some things we need to talk about. Uh-huh. There are some things we need to talk about. And brothers and sisters, that's the way we need to go to God with the complaint and say, God, ask God some questions and call God on the carpet and say, God, there are some things on my agenda that we need
need to talk about that has not come to pass just yet. I wrote these down about five or ten years ago, and I'm yet still dealing with them. Lord, what is the problem? Have you ever been there? Have you ever been perplexed by your issues or your problems or the things that you were dealing with in life? Ever felt the fury of hell was on your back? Uh, as old folks say, the hell hounds, come on, were on your trail, and, and you wonder where was God in all of this? Have you ever been on a place where you were singing a song? God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God is good. He's so good to me that it was simply too easy to sing. If you've been there, brothers and sisters, if you are there right now, you need to learn from the psalmist what does he teach us from this. Lesson number one. When life falls apart, first of all, we need to turn to God, not away from him. Turn to God and not away from him. Because it's an amazing thing when God turns your way. That's another, another sermon for another time. But I must say, it's amazing when God turns your way. People won't understand it. People won't. People will be in the question, how did you get there? And the light, it's amazing when God turned your way. Yes, sir. When God start turning heads in your life, people start paying attention to you. Good God Almighty, watching how you get blessed. That's a wonderful thing. When God turns your way, when God start redirecting the blessings that you getting. Come on. Many times, with brothers and sisters, I've stood with families even uh, at the break of a tragedy or death and in the midst of terrible or lost. And, and you can understand it. They will even ask you the question or must say, we must not question God. The devil's a lie. We can question God's will. Moses did. Jeremiah did. Job did. Paul did. Even Jesus did. Lord, if it's your will, let this cup pass from me. That's a statement. Come on. And the psalmist David did the exact same thing, and so we can. God is big enough to accept our fury. Come on. Number two, when we turn to God, we need to be honest open, and not deceptive. Many times, uh, brothers and sisters, we got to understand that, 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 that God requires us to be open and honest with him. We can't go to God and, and not be honest about what we're going through. How do we expect God to get us through? We are living in a dangerous time, and we got to seek God for ourselves and those that are around us and connected to us. So we got to go to God, honestly say, God, look here, I made this mistake, I made that mistake. I need you. Because our relationship with God is just simple. A relationship, in relationship with God, we must speak honestly. We must speak openly to each other what we feel. So whoever you're dealing with, who you got that level of feeling with, you need to be open with them, whether it's your husband or your soon-to-be husband or your want-to-be wife or your want-to-be husband. You got to be open and honest and tell them, if you love me, put a ring on. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. If you love me, make some of me. If you love me, say I'm sorry. The complaint, brothers and sisters, of the summoners was like an explosion. People today use the expression, he vented, uh-huh, but he vented to the right person. Come on. God is the right person we need to vent to. Come on. Honestly, that is the very first step 
in dealing with this dark time. We need to lay it before God. Stop talking about it. Come on. Stop elevating it. Stop giving it power and lay it before God. I don't care what it is. If you are not getting along in your house with your spouse, come on. You need to sit down, stop talking about it, stop talking to it, and talk to God. Get it in the face of God. You got people still out here talking about Donald Trump. The Donald Trump gone. Come on. We need to be praying for the current administration. He gone. God done done what he said. We long for ask God to move him. He's out, but we still elevating. We still talking about it. TV talk with it. TV talk about it. Turn it. We got to lay things before God and let God be the just judge. We have seen him work. So the complaint of David to God, I'm trying to lay some out for you. We're going to get out of here. The complaint to God that David presented towards God gave way to the next few verses. Come on. See, a lot of times we'll start out complaining with God. We'll start complaining to God and we'll end up complaining to God. We get up, Come on. Rather than taking step of, of different steps, once we complain to God, we need to leave it alone. Uh-oh. Notice the communication changed. Uh-huh. Remember I said that David started out complaining to God. Notice the change in the verses 3 through 4. Before the psalmist, his whole attention had been fixed on the turmoil in his life. The turmoil that was in his heart. He changed his focus to God. And he began to talk to God about the situation of his life. And why God needed to do something. Uh-oh. What was the crisis in the psalmist's life was, we don't know for sure. We don't know what exactly David was going through at this particular point. Some thought that David had a problem. A problem was an individual who was harassing him. Or some may thought that the enemy was deaf. And some thought that uh, it was a spiritual uh, issue and referred to the devil as, that was the habits of, of David's life, but we certainly don't know exactly what his issue was. We do not know exactly what the problem was, uh, but we got to understand and we must know the key is not what the problem was, but what was the sumness solution. The key was not what the problem was, but what David did with the problem. You see, we all are faced with something in our life. It's not what it is. It's how we deal with it. It's not what it is. It's how we focus on it. It's not what it is, but whom we give it to. <laughs> David, he went to God with the problem. He honestly expressed his feelings about the problem. Then in his communication with God, he presented two reasons why God should do something about the problem. When we look at the psalm, the reasons are referred to as motivations. Uh -huh. In verse 3, the psalmist, he pled with God to intervene so that he would not die. That's common sense. Yeah, I would have done the same thing. And then in verse 4, David pled with God to intervene so that God's enemies would not prevail or rejoice over him. So what can we learn from that? We learned that communication with God is vital to our relationship with him. What we learned from that, we learned that our communication with God is important and vital to our healing. It says that our communication with God will determine how we will respond to the problem. 
So therefore, in our relationship with God, venting is all right. You can vent all you want, but we need to move past venting to discussing with God and listening to God. I'm trying to get somewhere. To communicate with God requires uh, uh, frequent face-to-face -face sessions. Yeah, yeah, face-to-face -face dialogue with God. After the passionate presentation of his complaint, we're talking about David, after David had presented his case to God, David settled down into a dialogue session with God about his problem. And thus communication with God will lead us to the next two verses. Verses 5 and 6, David gained not only respect, but he, re he gained confidence in God. Confidence in God, complaint gave way to praise in the final two verses of the song. Yes, 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 yes. Face-to-face -face dialogue with God. Why was the problem solved? Was the pain taken away? There is no indication throughout any theologian that this text, that anything had changed in his condition. Come on. It ain't said nothing by David was spared or nothing. But what did change? I'm going to say why uh, then the change of David's attitude. Why did David's attitude change? His complaint had brought him into dialogue with God. And in his dialogue with God, David began to remember, oh, oh, have mercy. He began to remember some things that he had been in danger of before, but had forgot. Come on. He remembered, number one, the unfailing love of God, which restored his trust. And that's why, brothers and sisters, we need to have some dialogue sessions with God. Because God will remind you of what he already done. Come on, somebody. So David began to reflect on God. He remembered <clears throat> the salvation of God that made him rejoice. Not only the dialogue session brought tears to David's eyes. But it caused David to remember the goodness of God, which gave him a song in his heart. Because the psalmist, David, was willing to take his complaint to God. He was able to remember again who God was and the remembrance of who God was inspired him to face life with hope. Can I get a witness? Somebody, I need you to reflect on what God has already done. And as you reflect what God has already done, that no matter what you're going through, nobody knows the trouble you've seen. Nobody knows but Jesus. Can I get a witness? When you can look where the Lord has brought you from, you can see despair and hope of protest and praise in this text today. Praise is a very important word in our language of faith. In fact, it will not be too much to say that for the Christian, the word praise should always be on the tip of our tongues. But sometimes, Praise need to give way to complaining as we come before God with our questions.
What is happening to me? Lord, why am I going through what I'm going through? Lord, how long is this going to last? Lord, as we say in honest protest, God, there are some things we need to talk about. That's we need to talk to God about. Is there anybody here on this live this morning got something that they need to talk to the Lord about? No matter what it is, you need to make your request known unto God. Begin to complain to God and say, Lord, how long will I go through this? How long Will you allow the enemy to triumph over me? Uh, how long am I going to be at odds with my enemies? Uh, Lord, I'm tired of being sick and tired. Good God Almighty, you can complain to God, vent to God, uh, because he is the right source of your problem. Uh, he is he has the right solution for your case. Uh, but you can't complain too long uh, because complaining will bring on sorrow. Complaining will put you in a horrible pit. Uh, once you complain to God, uh, it's time for you to get up off your knees uh, with assurance and hope uh, and say, Jesus is mine. Uh, you got to learn that when you complain to God, uh, you got to respond in a proper manner by getting up, lifting your hands uh, and say, the Lord will make a way out of no way. Uh, I know you're tired. I know you're weak. I know you're weary. I know you done had a tough time. But if you go from complaining to praise, praise will bring you to a different level. Because when you look back over your life, I know all of us got a praise report. I know God has been good to each and every one of us. I know God has brought you from a mighty long way. How long, how long, how long will I have to go through this God. Uh, but while I'm waiting on my change to come, uh, I got to lift my hands uh, and say, the Lord made a way out of no way. Uh, is there anybody here this morning uh, going to lift your hands uh, and say, the Lord will fix it uh, and he'll make it all right. Uh, do you know that you know that you know that you know that you know uh, that God will make a way out of no way? Uh, if you know that God will uh, Make a way out of no way. Uh, leave your complaint on the altar uh, and tell God about it. Uh, and when you tell God about it, uh, get up off your knees and, and say, The Lord will make a way out of no way. Uh, God will uh, give you strength in turbulent times. Uh, we are living in a time right now. Uh, you should have been dead and gone. Uh, but God has made a way out of no way. Uh, good God of I'm so glad right now that I'm still here amongst the living and not the dead. We could have been dead six months ago, but God said not just yet. I know we've lost a lot of people in America, but God has kept you for times like this. God has kept you for times such as this. All we got to do is continue to pray and believe God will. How many know that God will? work it out for you no matter what you're going through uh, lay it on the altar walk away with your chest stuck up when you lay it on the altar leave it alone uh, and just go into a praise mode uh, because when you praise God um, heaven would open up uh, and he said he'll open up the windows uh, of heaven and pull you out a blessing um, that you will not have room to receive uh, but if you stay down on the knee of complaining uh, if you stay down on the knee of complaining uh, if you stay down on the knee of complaining uh, just way too long uh, that might be your permanent home uh, but if you get up from there even without a job uh, if you get up from there uh, even without money 
in your pocket. Uh, if you get up from there, uh, knowing your enemy is just around the corner, if you can just get up from there um, and gain strength in that, uh, God will, God will, God will uh, make a way out of no way. Uh, all you got to do uh, is stop complaining so much uh, and praise him more. Uh, because when praises go up, blessings shall come down. Uh, when you praise God, uh, from whom all blessings flow, uh, he's going to pull you out of blessing uh, that you won't have room to receive. Uh, and I'm so glad uh, that I'm a recipient of the blessings. Uh, I'm so glad uh, that I can hold my hands uh, and say the Lord will make a way out of no way. Uh, do anybody know that he will? Uh, if you know that he will, uh, come on and lift your hands uh, and say the Lord's going to make it all right. Uh, he will make it all right. Uh, why? Because he is a way maker. <laughs> How many you know he's a way maker? How many of you sitting in a place uh, that you never thought you could be in? Uh, you never thought you'd buy a house. Uh, you never thought you'd own a car. Uh, you never thought you'd have children. Uh, you never thought you'd have a husband. But look at you now. Uh, you went from complaining uh, to praising God. Uh, you went from not having uh, to having much. Uh, you went from this. Uh, you went from a shack. And to imagine, you went from smoking to driving a Cadillac. Come on, somebody. Is there anybody can be honest and open that when you look back over your life, you see where good God has brought you from. You have had some tough times, but you still made it. You done had some perilous times, but you still made it. How did you make it this far? Did not you praise God? Did not you lift your hands? Well, what's wrong with you now? This is nothing new for you. Whatever it is, that you're going through, uh, just do what you did when you was going through then uh, and do it right now uh, and he will make himself available. It's time out uh, for being silent uh, and we need to have a dialogue session uh, with the Lord. Uh, we need to call God uh, on the carpet uh, and say, God, uh, I've been dealing with this for five years. Uh, what's going to be the verdict? Uh, be honest with me, God. Uh, good God Almighty, uh, tell me the truth, God. Uh, what will be my destination? What's going to be the outcome? So if it's going to be this, if it's going to be that, I can go on and get my praise on. Whether it's good or bad. Because I do know that all things work together for the good of those uh, who are called uh, upon his purpose, uh, who are called and chosen uh, by God. Uh, no matter what it is, uh, I still going to praise you. Look, good God Almighty, the thorn that was in his flesh. Uh, good God Almighty that was blocking his view. Uh, God didn't remove the thorn, uh, but the thorn remained there uh, to keep him humble, uh, to remind him uh, that he should have died when they diagnosed him. He should have died. He should have gave up the ghost. He should have died when he had the thorn in his flesh. But the thorn reminded him that the Lord will never leave you nor forsake you. It may have been there physically, but in his spirit, he still began to praise God. And no matter what thorn is in your life, God may not remove it, but you can praise over it. You can praise through it. You can praise with it because don't let the doctor tell you that you're going to die because all sickness is not unto death. Some things we got to bear till we go to our grave. And good God Almighty, it ought to remind us that the Lord spared you, that the Lord kept you, that the Lord will keep you. Is there anybody here this morning know that God will keep you? in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on him he'll keep you huh huh from complaining to praise how do you respond in the dark times of your life what do you do 
to get you to your next moment. What do you do to get you to your next moment? How do you handle no? How do you handle I don't want to? How do you handle I don't feel like? How do you handle get out my face? How do you handle I can't stand you? How do I handle you ain't my past? How do I handle the criticism of the world? Hmm. How you handle? You ain't my daddy. You ain't my mom. I hate you. How do you respond in dark times? It's not just about COVID. I ain't elevating that. It's been here almost a year. Deal with it. I'm talking about actually you, your home, your circumstances, your life. How do you handle rejection from the world? From those whom you thought were close to you? Reject you. How do we respond in these dark times? Go from complaining to praise. God bless you. May heaven continually smile upon you. Father God, in the mighty precious name of Jesus, we close this live today. I pray for these who have tuned in that God, we pray and hope that this message finds them in a good place. A place where they now can get up with hope and assurance and confidence in you. I pray, dear God, that they will receive this word in their heart. Apply to the everyday life. And there are some folks you just got to give the hand. Because everybody can't go where you're trying to go. So God, I pray right now, blessings upon every person on this live. That this message will find them. That this message was for them. We thank you for your word, dear God. Bless us. Continue to keep us. Let this week be a blessed week as usual. That any hurdles, hurdles or, or walls that we may hit this week, dear God, we're going to praise our way through it. We're going to praise our way over it. We may complain about it, but we're going to praise our, we're going to press, praise our way through it with the help of you, God. So God, we say thank you for your word. We thank you. We give you all the glory, honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. May heaven continue to smile upon you, and no weapon formed against you shall prosper. He is a way maker. He is a way maker. So God bless all of you. May heaven continue to smile upon you. We'll see you next week. God bless.